Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today got a build for you. This one's going to be using McFluffin's Scales of Edera Catalyst, which is a catalyst that has three different variations, and it can increase a ton of damage for you on a specific element for about 10 seconds, and then you'll do less damage with that element for 10 seconds, and in that 10 seconds of downtime, you can do a hybrid Build where you'll have another element in the case of this build we're going to be using cold and fire and we're going to be matching that up with the throne of ambition which is a unique idol that you can get for increased damage up to 400 percent increased damage now scales of edera is a more and less damage modifier so if you already have say 400 percent increased damage thanks to the throne of ambition you can actually get up to 80 percent more which will put you up to about 700 720 percent increased damage so it's a huge 300 percent increased damage based as those stacks go up which can be huge allowing you to do really great huge damage hits with your cold and your fire hits as long as you run them in the perfect rotation and you're using them at the right time so let's go ahead and get into the skills the interactions and just how this build works for skills i'm running a static orb flame orb volcanic orb focus and teleport for static orb, we have this set up the same way that we would use it if we were just using the static orb build. That's going to be that it orbits you. We're using the little orbs for damage so that the mana cost is very low. That way, with a lot of mana regeneration, we'll be able to get all of our mana back, stay full. And then when we have to spam volcanic orb, which is going to cost a lot of mana, we'll actually have the mana for it without really having to focus. Now, if you spam volcanic orb for 10 seconds straight, you'll probably have to focus once or twice. But we're trying to stay away from actually having to use focus and still have really good high dps output so with this skill we have two points in shocking conduit one point in insidious focus one point in orbital fumination so that they will at least orbit around you this does only give you one big orbit or one big static orb but that's fine because we're using the little ones for the damage one point in ball lightning so the big ones will not explode or have a 90 percent chance not to explode and what that means is they're going to basically not do the explosion damage, but this is also fine because this doesn't affect the little orbs at all, so we can still get all of our damage out of that. Now this is normally a lightning skill, but we have one point in biting force to turn it into a cold damage skill, and it'll also have a freeze rate with that, so you have a chance to not only freeze the enemies, but you can also apply frostbite since we did have some shock chance, and that's converted to frostbite chance, so that'll also increase your chance to freeze as well as do a little damage over time. One point in Forking Surge, three points in Open Circuit, four points in Scatter Blast so that we have the four small orbs every time that we cast it. Those won't disappear, those do orbit all the way out unless you hit like a wall or some sort of collision. But other than that, they pierce, they do everything that you need to do and that's where most of your damage will come from. We also have two points in Static Armor to give you Lightning Aegis, which gives you increased lightning damage and less damage taken. The lightning damage increase isn't really going to help you at all who are not doing lightning damage, but the less damage taken is very nice to have. And then four points in critical trajectory so that we have a 100% increase critical strike multiplier with the skill itself. With Flame Ward, we have this set up to be defensive. It's also going to give us increased mana regen while it's active, and a portion of the damage we take, since we don't have any ward in this build, will be taken as health. We have three points in dilation, one point in infusion, and one point in Lightning Ward to convert it to Lightning. Now you're probably wondering why. That's because we don't want Flame Ward to interact with our Fire and Cold hybrid mixed with the Scales of Edera. We don't want to interrupt that rotation by accidentally having a Flame Ward go off at the wrong time. So we convert it to Lightning so it'll have no effect for us. We then have one point in Star Wars Defense, five points in Barrier, one point in Prismatic Buffer, two points in True Shielding, two points in Mental Aegis so that a percentage of damage taken is instead eaten up in our mana, and four points in warmth for 100% increased mana regen. For Volcanic Orb, we have this set up for basically as much damage as possible. It's only going to last two seconds, but we went for as much hit damage as possible, and then also for the Fire Explosion and the Glyph on the ground for Fire Explosion, because all of that's going to do a ton of damage for us. We have five points in Molten Core, Four points in Volcanic Acceleration, two points in Volcanic Frenzy, one point in Concentrated Effect, two points in Monolith Eruption, one point in Glyph of Fire so that we create a Glyph, two points in Lava Flow, one point in Controlled Eruption, one point in Explosive Orb so it explodes at the end for even more damage, and one point in Volcanic Tether. 
Now we're not having the volcanic orb be stationary. We actually like the fact that it moves. It means you can send it back at enemies behind you as well as send it towards enemies in front of you. And it does pretty good damage in a decent AoE area. And then we have focus, which is set up the normal way. That's going to be for increased armor, reduced damage taken, and then as much mana and some haste as possible. So we got four points in mana flooded, one point in desperate meditation, four points in revelation, one point in energy infusion, one point in resolute stance, five points in prismatic stance, and four points in iron stance. And then for teleport, we have this set up to give us buffs. It'll give us elemental resist, some increased armor, some increased stun avoidance, and then also create some decoys so that we can distract the enemies. We got five points in crystalline passage, five points in time dilation, four points in resonant plasma, four points in elemental affinity, one point in decoy position, and one point in unexpected copy. For passives, I've got 37 points in the base mage class with 6 points in scholar, 8 points in elementalist, 8 points in arcanist, 5 points in mage flurry, and 10 points in knowledge of destruction. We have 0 points in the spellblade and 75 points in the sorcerer, our mastered class, with 8 points in calculated destruction, 8 points in brainstorm, 5 points in arcane momentum, 6 points in Wisdom, 1 point in Cryomancer, 1 point in Pryomancer, and that is so we can get the Leech for both Fire and Cold, so 5 points in Lava Mancer, 5 points in Chilled of the Bone, 5 points in Afterglow, 8 points in Crackling Precision, 5 points in Arcane Obliteration, 8 points in Elemental Ascendance, 5 points in Spell Slinger, and 5 points in Arch Mage. For idols, items, uniques, and blessings, for our idols, we do have one unique idol. That's the Throne of Ambition. And this is what's going to give you up to 400% increased fire and cold damage. It's why we're using a fire and cold hybrid mix of skills, is to really take advantage of that. You can also get 400% increased armor. In fact, when I have those 20 stacks, my armor goes from a mere like 20% damage reduction to over 50% damage reduction. So it's a huge boost of defense, especially when you're fighting rares or when you're fighting bosses, as that's when you're going to start getting all of those stacks. The 400% fire and cold damage increase that you get is multiplicative with the scales of Edera. So when you get the 80% more at 10 stacks of fire or of cold damage, it's going to take that 400% and make it about 720%. And that's on top of whatever other percentages you have, whether it be from idols or passives or gear. So you can see why you can get a lot of damage. You can easily get a thousand percent increased damage of both fire and cold, although not at the same time. And then also, this is one, it's a really rare, unique, you're going to have to do Argent Argentus, the boss, the level 66 timeline, or level 62 timeline now, quite a few times before it drops. I think it took me like 13 tries to get it, so it did take a while. The other idols are some one by ones that you can do whatever you want. I just went for resistance on them. And then the best hybrid two by twos that I could find was a chance to apply frostbite on cold hits so that our static orb would be applying frostbite to do some damage over time. This will also make it do a little extra damage over time on top of that, give you a higher chance to freeze. And then these also have up to a 38% increased fire damage doubled if you have over 300 max mana, which we do in this build. So having a few of those kind of help the build a little bit, not mandatory though. And then for other uniques we have in the build, we have the Fractured Crown, which gives us Spell Critical Strike Multiplier, which is huge because we will have very high Spell Crit Chance. This also consumes a bit of damage into your mana, so you do have to be careful while you're using Volcanic Orb. If you have too many enemies that you have chased together and they're doing too much damage to you, your mana can drain really, really quick. So you do want to be careful how many enemies you actually try and gather on yourself. You don't really want to kite too many in this one. You more of want to kill everything as you go. Then we have the scales of Edera. And like I said, this one is the cold and fire version. It does come in three different variants. You can get cold and lightning, lightning and fire, and in this case, cold and fire. This will give us increased cast speed, int and attunement, which will give us extra mana. And then it comes up with elemental resistance. It also has a base of a lot of intelligence and spell critical strike chance. Obviously aiming towards getting that 6% is the best you can do. I have a 4% one 
in the game with me right now. And then the last unique is the Eye of Orexa, which gives us some physical fire and poison resistance. Not much, but it increases the Volcanic Orb damage, it increases the Volcanic Orb speed, and it increases the cooldown recovery speed for it, as well as the Shrapnel speed, and gives you cast speed. So you can cast very, very quick with this build. And then on top of that Volcanic Orb, if you have the 10 stacks of skills of Edera for the fire infusion, you actually have about a 300,000 damage tooltip when you have the 20 stacks of Throne of Ambition as well. So it's actually crazy, crazy damage. For all the crafted gear, basically what you're going for is as much health as possible. We are leeching, so you want cast speed, you want adaptive spell damage, you want fire damage or cold damage, or in this case, elemental damage might be your best bet to upgrade both of them. And then also just make sure you get as much health, movement, speed, critical strike avoids, you know, all the normal things that you would get with a build for defense. Some mana regen will help, but you really don't need much mana regen. I only have it on my amulet and my belt. You can get it on your rings too if you want. On this one, I put it on the rings. However, I don't have that in game. But if you did, it would actually speed it up even more. But again, you'll notice my mana is almost always full. You don't have to have tier 5 mana or higher on all the pieces that you can get it. And then for blessings, the one blessing you want to make sure that you get is when you're fighting Rhea, make sure that you get spell damage leeched as health, as that's going to be the big thing that helps you in getting all of that leech. So you're going to get some leech from your passives, but you're going to get most of your leech from this one blessing, and this is what's going to keep you alive. With this, with how much damage that you're doing, even with both of the skills, it'll keep your health full. And then beyond that, just increased mana and anything else that you want. I was trying to get flat armor and increased armor inside of the last two blessings just to really take advantage of that 400% increase that you can get from the Throne of Ambition. For the character sheet, you can see we had just over 2200 health. We're not quite capped on resistance, but remember when you teleport that you do gain all your elemental and your physical, and you're going to keep that for 8 seconds. So you do want to teleport once every 8 seconds just to make sure that your elemental is capped, your physical is basically capped, and then it's just necrotic and void that you kind of have to look out for or try and get that on your gear which I just haven't done yet. We have 16% damage reduction due to armor, but when we have our 20 stacks of Throne of Ambition, this actually goes over 50% damage reduction. So it's actually a huge boost of damage reduction against rares and bosses once you start getting those stacks. And then for damage types, you can see we have 150% cold damage and 314% fire damage. Now, I can't do the Throne of Ambition because I don't have a rare or a boss around me however i will show you what happens when you start getting your stacks here and that's going to be if i fire off one static orb you can see my damage starts taking off and you can see that even though it says it gives me eight percent more damage it's not an increased it is a more damage multiplier and by the time we get up here to 10 stacks we went from 150 percent to 350 percent so we ended up having a total of 200 percent increased cold damage which is huge now you can imagine having another 400% base cold damage from the Throne of Ambition, just how high that would get. And then if we fire off a Volcanic Orb, you can see that my fire damage starts going up while the cold goes down. And my fire is going up by even bigger chunks since we had more of it to begin with. And we went from that 300 and so percent that we had up to about 600%, which is a huge, huge boost of damage. So you'll keep going back and forth in a 10 second cycle just to be able to boost that as much as possible. And again, we have Flame Ward set up to be lightning so that it doesn't interact with the cold or fire. For other defense, we do have some endurance. I have some endurance threshold, and I'm just shy of my 100% critical strike avoidance, but I'm still trying to gear this character up. However, it still feels very, very tanky, considering a huge portion of the damage we take does go into mana, so just make sure you have good mana regen to kind of counterfeed that. So how I play this build, skill rotation, all of that, I like to put Flame Lord on autocast. I only focus if I really need mana. If you take a lot of damage, you might want to focus, but you'll want to teleport away. Make sure that you're teleporting once every 8 seconds to get that elemental damage capped or elemental resistance capped. And then as you use a ice or a cold skill, you'll see here you start getting these stacks. And this is going to count all the way up to 10. Once it gets to 10... That's when you want to stop using your uh, cold skill, and you're going to want to switch to fire. So right there goes the 10, and boom, the timer's up. And then you go back to using Volcanic Orb, and then you'll get the 10 stacks of the Volcanic Orb. And for damage here, you can see that it's going to keep going up. We're doing 70,000 damage hits with it here, and you can see my tooltip was about 227,000 without the Throne of Ambition having that increased 400%, which would have been even more than that. But you can see... 
if you cast your ice or your cold here, you can do tons and tons of damage. You have your huge AoE, then when that's up, you use your good old volcanic orb. You have the flame burst here that's going to do great damage. You have the volcanic orb explosion, which does really good damage. If I fire it here, you can see that get its hit. Nope, not far enough away. We'll go a hit from here. And then boom, still missed. But you can see you have AoE with it. You can do good damage with it. I believe the fire glyph and the or is it the shrapnel i think you have to have a direct hit with the shrapnel yeah right there you have the fifty thousand damage hit so that's the really damaging hit that you can do so as long as you fire that into the group of mobs or if you have everything hiding behind you and you throw it behind you you're going to get those really big hits on them for leveling this character i'd recommend that you start off with elemental nova or start off with lightning blast until you unlock static orb and get a few points into that once you get static orb you can level with static orb and go into the end game with static orb until you get all the uniques you need now if you already have the uniques then as soon as you have static orb you can also go ahead and throw on the volcanic orb and start getting into that rotation and that's going to be it for this build guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's just a fun way to play where you have two different element types as damage dealers. And you kind of have this rotation that you have to abide by to do maximum damage. So it is a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy it. As always, stay safe and enjoy some gameplay.